Okay, the Ohio Cast Podcast. National Middle School Duels is coming up again. Special guest today, all the way from Nebraska, Tim Ziola. The Tim Ziola, as I like to call you. Yeah, there you go. Dynasty Death Row coming back to the National Middle School Duels. You guys are – where are you guys at in Nebraska, Coach Ziola? Uh, I live, we're in Omaha, and uh, we've got guys from all over the country, though. Okay. And you guys were three Peters for the National Middle School Duels, the toughest dual tournament in the uh, country for middle school. Three times in a row you won it, and then POWA – stole the crown last year uh what do you guys got to do to get back on top this year and will you have a son on the team again this year yeah well first first and foremost we got to get our guys there you know last year we had an issue we had a couple of people a couple of our guys competing internationally uh over in sweden uh in the process of trying to get back they they had some issues so they were unable to make uh the event so consequently we kind of had to shuffle our lineups around and uh and, and make no mistake powa and team usa and and those teams put some great teams together. So first and foremost, we've got to get our guys there. It looks like we're, that's going to happen. Uh, second of all, I will have my son Ben uh, will be on the team. My son Cade is in high school. He's a sophomore. So uh, I, I miss him, but I get to see him plenty too. Does your son go to Scott? Am I getting that right? Yeah, yeah. My, my son my son Cade has a twin brother. Uh, he and his twin brother, brother plays baseball. And Cade, they both go to Scott, correct? Okay. You guys live in Nebraska, not Iowa, though. No, we live in Nebraska. Yeah. Okay, because I think you can live in Iowa and go to Scott, can't you? That's what that's what, that's what Gilman did. Yeah, Gilman Thomas Gilman lived in Council Bluffs, which is right across the river, and then drove to Scott every day. Because I know a couple other people who've done that. I know that, um, like Travis Pasco, who was a coach for a while, was an All American at Nebraska. He lived in Idaho and he went to Gonzaga Prep in Washington. So some states allow that. I know Ohio doesn't, and I don't believe Pennsylvania does. And those are the two yeah. states I obviously have the most um, uh, information and knowledge base of, right? Because I'm not too far from PA, and obviously I deal with them and cover them a lot. And for being from Ohio, I know that. So you guys are there. One kid at Scott. What year is your son who will be on the team this year? He's in eighth grade. So this this will be his last year competing in middle school. It seems like he's been competing in middle school forever because he kind of has been. Uh, even as an elementary guy, he wrestled middle school for quite a few years. But uh, I'm excited. I'm not excited for the Bills, but I'm excited to uh, get them all in high school and kind of get them all in the same area again. I don't think I'd be too excited for the Bill either. No, no, but it's worth <laughs> it. We're, we're pretty happy. We're, we're To say we're happy with Scott would be a, a huge understatement. It's a great place. Okay, so the National Middle School Duels, you've had two sons compete at it. What's cool about it is that it's a K through eight competition. You can have kids as young as six years old, five years old if they're K for those 50 pounders, all the way up to over 200 pounds we've got you know it's a wide range it's really tough to put a dual team together this is year number eight Dom D'Amelio and staff have done a great job they've been at the Seagate Center for seven of the eight years let's talk about two years ago when you guys won and it was at the soccer field the soccer yeah, the dome bubble. in Rossford and we, we called it the bubble I don't know what the heck it was called but we just called it the big bubble they and they, they put it they put a great event together when we're right in the middle of, uh, of the throes of COVID. I think the easy thing for Dom and his team to do would have been to turn around and just say, you know, throw our hands up and say, we're not going to do that. Um, you know, I know that a, a large portion of the money goes to benefiting uh, the Genoa Wrestling Club and some of the local organizations there. And I think it, it kind of testifies, it's a testament to Dom and his team for number one, wanting to make sure that we keep the tradition alive. And number two, wanting to make sure that the revenue and, and donations are there to help some of the local clubs. Dom is absolutely aces to me. I, did. I think he's just, he's one of the best to do it. It was wild when it was that year because it was 10 parents slash spectators per team. And it was, there were days where it would get really dicey. There were days yeah. where the, the, the health inspector came in and was like, hey, if you do this again, we're shutting the event down. But to the credit of Dom and Jody Burnett and the Burnett Trained Wrestling Club and Janoa's Wrestling, all of them, they were able to keep the, the event going. What was that like, knowing that you guys traveled halfway across the country, knowing that the event could be canceled? Well, you know, I had heard, and first of all, I want to spend a, send a special shout out to Jody. Uh, I was just giving Scott a hard time this weekend at, at the preseason nationals. She's she's one of the best in the business. She's tough and she's kind and she's she's so good. She takes such great care of all of us. 
Um, so, so Jody, you're you're one of the best. Scott, you're kind of a bum, but I love you. Yeah, <laughs> I just love that guy. He's just he's just the best. You know, he wrestled at Nebraska for a year, so there's kind of that connection there as well. Um, you know, I, I think I think we all just kind of came into it with the attitude that we just wanted to wrestle. I think we understood uh, kind of the the all the factors that were leading up to it. I think that we recognized that Dom was busting his butt to get this thing going. I heard some stories. I can't confirm or deny that Dynasty was complicit in this, but you know they were only allowing a couple spectators in per wrestler, maybe one or two. I had heard that there was some um, phony passes getting made and people were kind of coming in and out. I know my squad would never be a party to something like that, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we, we muddled through and the health inspectors were there making it tough, but, but they were doing their job too. I mean, ultimately, you know, it's kind of like when the boys, when my boys act up, I tell them you're doing what you're supposed to do and I'm supposed to kick your butt. So it all works out. You know that I introduced Scotty to Jody. You know that, right? Oh my, he outkicked his coverage. Scott, you outkicked his coverage. <laughs> I love it. Hey, 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 I don't know if you know, they got caught cheating this weekend. Did you know that? Unbelievable. I posted on their Facebook. So I saw Gray was in high school and I thought this is going to be an issue. So he comes out, whoops a few people, and then everybody started calling. So I, I snuck up behind Scott and I said, "You cheating, sob!" And he just died laughing. Oh. But in fairness, I think preseason nationals. I'm not trying to be political, but the the people at preseason nationals let Gray wrestle at 110. He did, I think he got second. He wrestled his butt off. So I think they tried to make it right. But I think more than anything, it's just lack of communication. I think that's the biggest thing. Obviously. <laughs> Nobody who's trying to go up a division is cheating, right? Like, yeah. I think we get that. What's the yeah. joke, though? Because they take it so seriously. It's their life. They live it. And I, I like giving them the business about it. I have to. It's yeah. kind of part of what I do with them. And the Burnettes can take it. I, I promise they can take it. They give they, me plenty, so I got to give them as much as they can handle. Yeah, they're pretty tough. Uh, yeah. This event, now they're coming back to, um, and you guys were there last year, but it's Seagate. And now Seagate has changed to the Glass City Center. They've mm -hmm. added some some uh, renovations to it. Last year, the hotels were closed. This is a one-stop shop at National Middle School Duels for you guys. Um, when you get there, do you leave the arena and the hotel area at no. all? Or do you Never. just stay? No, we, we, I don't even rent a car. I just get an Uber. We go to the venue. We, uh, we eat there. We sleep there. We do everything there. I don't drink, so I don't have to run out to the liquor store or do any of that stuff. We just, we just stay there, and that's – that's a huge convenience, and I think that that's, that's a really, really positive thing. Again, you know, when they were muddling through, through COVID and through the renovations and everything, I think we all just had to make do. But I think it shows a high level of awareness of what we want. And, and it's crazy because all of the great kids kind of are all there, and it's great to see them all kind of cutting it up and having fun and the parents having fun. So it's, it's, a, it's definitely got kind of that homey, barrack-type feel that we like. So Pinnacle... In the past, the Senate team, I don't think Pinnacle is going to be back this year. I know they'll be back in years to come. I know Thorne, Thorne Wrestling out of Minnesota with Coach Thorne will be there this year. Um, Buxton always has a nice squad out of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know M2 with David Taylor, the Magic Man, brings a team. Is that who you guys beat in the finals in the, the, the Soccer Dome Mushroom deal? We, we did. We, we beat them. It was funny because David – as a, as a good buddy of mine and he was texting me and called me when we got in the finals, he was kind of razzing me pretty good. And it was, it was touch and go, but uh, Tyson Terry had a big win in the finals and kind of got us over the edge. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I called that. I remember calling that finals. That was a sweet final to call. Yeah. Cause Jax Forrest was in it. Oh, yeah. Bassett was, is it one of your kids was in it? I know mm -hmm. that Cunningham was in it. I know that who are the kids from Florida Buzakis, both with the Buzakis girl and younger boy were in it. Yep. It was an it was a great final to call, man. I love looking back on that stuff and seeing some of the the names I've got to call. I know Ferraris were at this event before. I know the twin um, Cassiopes were there last year. So the yeah. events always had a who's who of people. I know that uh, Swiderski's been at the event before. I mean, it's oh, yeah, just yeah. it's a great event, man. It's yeah. just a really really good event. Um, hey, your office is really cool. First off, is that is that the Yellowstone guy? Is that my, do I have the that's, character right? That's Rip Wheeler, man. That's my guy. Yellowstone guy, right? Yeah, yep, yep, Rip Wheeler. One of the, I, I like Yellowstone, and, and one of my uh, guys on my team that, that worked for me got that for me for my birthday. It was my only birthday present, so uh, I posted it prominently. And then behind it's a picture from 1952 of South Omaha when all the stockyards were kind of there. I'm a South Omaha boy. 
And uh, so I, I don't know. I look at those two. It kind of reminds me uh, of where I came from. But kind of sweet. Where uh, you got Titleist clubs there? Yeah, I got a. I, I'm a sponsor for this Folds of Honor event. It's for uh, it's for uh, disabled and former uh, soldiers that have come back from war. So every year uh, I get involved in an auction and try and buy whatever's prominent. So uh, golf is kind of my golf and wrestling are kind of my two significant leagues, and carbohydrates would be the three things that I'm kind of really into. <laughs> did you did you wrestle in high school and college, Tim? I did. I played baseball. I wrestled my freshman year. Uh, wrestled uh, some as a youth. It wasn't very good. Uh, I preferred. I didn't like wrestling because it really cut into my quail hunting time. So uh, I have a twin. I, I I have a twin brother that was a good wrestler, and um, I played baseball in college, and uh, I played football and baseball in high school. And uh, it was it was crazy because I I have one son that's a baseball player and two are wrestlers, and uh, I didn't really like wrestling. I don't like ringworm, and I don't like staff, and I don't like smelly shoes and all that stuff. But it, it, it wouldn't have mattered to me if they wanted to play the tuba. I was going to find the best tuba tuba person I could, tuba instructor I could find. And that's the good stuff right there, no doubt about it. So that's the good stuff, right? The good stuff. Yep. I work with these guys pretty extensively. Defense Soap, West Shore. They'll have a team there this year. They're always competing. Listen, the minions from Georgia have won the tournament before. You guys are three-time champs. I mean, I just get super excited. Here's here, listen. I'm going to just be honest with you for me personally. If I'm any of these clubs, there's 32 teams. If you're able to make that gold pool, because it's gold, silver, uh, bronze, platinum, there's four 18 pools at the end on Sunday, and there's no oh. downtime with any of that unless you get a forfeit. But if you make the gold pool at this tournament, your club's doing something right. Your team's doing something right. Would you agree with that statement? 100%. I mean, I, I think – the road getting there. What, what Dom does such a good job of is that every roster is darn near full. I mean, occasionally somebody's going to get sick, somebody's going to get hurt, somebody's going to miss a flight. But the reality is, is that when you've got 32 teams there and by and large, they're all full, it's one heck of, a heck of a tough sledding to get to the gold pool because even some of the teams that are at the bottom, you know, have that, that kind of customarily at the bottom have three or four really, really tough guys that beat your guys up. So it's, it's a, to, to make it to the gold pool at the National Middle School Duels, uh, it, it's hard to get frustrated when you don't win it because there's there's kind of an element of luck. There's an element of accomplishment, achievement there, but it's hard. I mean, you, you guys are getting beat up, and it's a very hard event. Is your twin brother as massive as a person as you? Is he huge? He is. He's my identical twin. I could get up and walk out, and he could sit down, and you'd never know. Same voice? Like, it's not like Everything. the same? We're both bald. We're both probably about a solid three out of ten, and we're both about 275 pounds. Yeah. But you're not bald though. You cut your hair. You're not. It's, true. You're not it's, bald. It's bad. There's not a lot there. I, I, I'm doing the best I can with what with what the good Lord's given me. So then you have, you have two sons that are twins, right? Is that did I hear that right? Yeah, I, I have twins. It's got Cade and Jace are their names. Uh, Jace is a is a right-handed pitcher, third baseman, and and he was a good wrestler. He's got some Division One offers. He's waiting to kind of decide what he wants to do. He said after he commits, he's going to try and win a Nebraska state title. Um, I think he can do it. Uh, and then my son, Cade, just wrestles and, and uh, his brother. And then Ben is the eighth grader, and he just gave up everything. This is the first year that he's just going to wrestle. No more baseball, no more football. Is it hard to jump in um, to the wrestling world at, with, like, a baseball and a football background? Is it hard to jump in as a dad and being as involved as, involved as you are? Is that, like, a difficult like, transition to make? It's, it's a hard transition. There, there's no question it's a hard transition. Uh, just kind of learning, just kind of learning where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. Uh, in the age of YouTube and the internet, I've been able to kind of learn some of the lingo. I've, I've had the Dave Scapides and the Ray Clarks and, and the, you know, the guys like that along the way that have kind of helped me uh, learn about all the teams and building the teams and, and everything that goes into it. But, you know, I, I don't know. Part of my job is just listening. And so I just try and sit back a lot and listen to what the coaches are saying and, and everybody always calls me coach Ziola and I'm like, I don't coach. I just try, try to facilitate, you know, I want to be in the picture, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I'm not showing technique or anything like that. I, I try and stay in my own lane and generally find myself uh, putting out fires and writing checks would be the two things that I think I do the most of. Okay. What do you do for a living? Now they see this like kind of cool office and see that oh, you've yeah, got yeah. like, uh, what do you do for a living? So I'm a financial advisor. So I, I, I run our Nebraska, operation for a firm called Raymond James and Associates based in Tampa, Florida. So I kind of have two two jobs. One, I, I manage a retail book of business. So 
when I started in the business, I was a stockbroker. Now I'm a financial advisor. I, I don't really know the evolution. I manage people's money. Uh, the other part of it is I manage our operations. So I'm what's known as a complex manager. So I've built a couple of offices here. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of guys and gals that I've recruited to come work here. And uh, they're, they're like me. They're kind of hard to deal with sometimes. But I make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing and the bills are paid and compliance is done. And uh, it's good. It's, it's, I've been doing it almost 21 years and it's good markets, bad markets. It's, it's a hard job, but it's very rewarding and, and it's been really good. This gigantic six foot three, 270 pound loud human is a financial advisor, not a farmer, not oh. a, not a, not a person who works out in the, in the, uh, like a, like you almost look like an iron worker. You look I like a I... boiler maker, a pipe oh. fitter. You look like a trade guy. You don't look like a guy who's managing wealth. I'm just going to put it oh. out there. Sorry. Oh. I was just going to do that. No, it's there. It's there. I, I wanted, all I wanted to do was be a, a Mason. I wanted to be a concrete guy and a bricklayer uh, growing up. And I was back when I drank, I got drunk at my old high school. They wanted to do some batting cages there. I was drunk and I shot my mouth off and said, if you guys raise the money, I'll do all the work. And the guy that was raising the money just wrote a check. I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a financial advisor. I said, I have a degree in finance. He said, why don't you come work for me? And here I am. So my back's a little more, but my, my, my belly's a little bigger, I think. Dude, I think you're a big tall. I don't even know what you're talking about. No, no, I don't see that. Uh, what does your twin brother do for a living? He works for a firm called Edelman Financial Engines. So he kind of recruits money for them. So I recruit money and clients as well as manage the money. He's more on the recruitment side of it in terms of he doesn't make investment decisions. He just is more of an account manager and kind of tells their story. And he also coaches baseball at a school called Creighton Preparatory School here in Omaha. So he's a, he's a baseball guy too. Do you ultimately, okay, so like you understand the, the long game of things. You wanted to be a Mason. Right now you'd have two fake shoulders, probably two fake hips. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't play that. You played the long game of finance, right? Yeah. What do you ultimately want your kids to get out of the sport of wrestling? Two of your three kids wrestle. What do you want yeah. them to get out of the sport of wrestling? You know, I used to think about that a lot when I was spending all this money and traveling all over the place. I used to think about it and it, it came to me. It was told to me by about, about six months ago by uh, Travel Delaca. And you know, Travel, I think, don't you? You got to watch, you got to watch my podcast with him. He talks about being okay. in a refugee camp as a four-year-old. Yes, I know him. He's a great guy. He's the best. He's one of my best friends. I, I love him. Great and, guy. And he, he said to me uh, one day, your boys are very, very tough men. And he said, what's really cool about your boys is they're so good at being comfortable while they're uncomfortable. So the answer to your question is, you know, I, I don't, you know, my mom, I lost my mom 14 years ago. I was 29 years old. It was a, it was a horrible, horrible situation. She died of breast cancer. She was 50 years old. And I, I called uh, back on my sports experience and I want my boys to be able to deal with uh, some of the hardships and hard things in life. And I think that wrestling, cutting weight and hygiene and cleanliness and hard work, I think it are the, the, the tenants to be able to do that. So all I want is I want to have tough men. I want to have alpha males. I want to have them. I want them to have a ton of empathy. I want them to be uh, kind and I want them to be Christian. I want them to be educated. And uh, ultimately, I think wrestling has done that for them. I think it continues to do it for them. That's why I'm so passionate about the sport. You know, nobody really makes any money wrestling. You look at the best, I manage wrestlers' money. And you look at the best baseball player in the world making $30 million a year. And you look at the best wrestler in the world and they're not making 30 million and it's not right, but it's just the world that we live in. So it's a labor of love. And, and I think that those guys and gals have, are, they're just tough. They're just tough people. And I think that's important. I think the grit and like revealing like the character behind you and being able to press on when other people can't press on, that would be the biggest things I want. My, if my kids wrestle, you know, they're five and six, if I mm -hmm. can get them to, to wrestle, I think that if, if they're able to like take those two things out of it, and then every, all the other qualities you, you mentioned are great, but like just to get to reveal what your character is, mm -hmm. can you press on when others cannot press on? It's like a war of attrition sometimes, right? Yeah. And you got to listen, if you're not preparing your kids for hard times and tough times, you're not preparing them for the real world. I think that people who hover and want to get their kids everything, you know, they're, they're not thinking about the long game of life, man, because life's not fair as you know life's not fair man i mean you lost your mom when you were a kid when you're 29 oh. right so oh. it's not fair it's not fair and teaching them that it's not fair and being tough and gritty and being able to press on 
when others can, I think is a, a huge quality of wrestling, in my opinion. Well, and I, I try really hard to break my, my children's life into two segments, when you're a kid, when you're an adult. And I, I'm, I'm from the school of thought that just because you turn 18 doesn't mean you're an adult. You know, I tell my boys that you're the recipients of the Zyla Scholarship. If you do what you're supposed to do, I'm going to take care of things. And that means be a kid. So it's important. My son, Jace, wants to be a doctor. My son, Cave, wants to fight in the UFC. Uh, I, I don't know if that's what he's going to do or not, but it's a long ways away. Uh, ben wants to take over my business. So the reality is, is I just keep trying to explain to him, you know, there's certain things that kids do. There's certain things that adults do. And if you want to be an adult, I'll make you an adult for 30 days. You're going to hate it because you're not going to want to pay taxes and rent and deal with all the things that we deal with. Be a kid as long as you can. So, you know, that's that, that's what's been so important to me. I was forced to grow up really, really, really young. Where I come from, you know, you grow up, the goal is to get 18 and get the heck out of the house. Your parents want you gone and you want to be gone. And so I want my guys to stay as, as long as they can. And I want them to get as much education and all these guys. I mean, all the guys and gals, you know, I never want to leave out Jackie Buzaka. She wrestles for us and she's awesome. But to all these guys and gals that I'm involved with, I just want to, I just want to make their lives better. I just want them to understand uh, that there's a direct correlation to working really, really hard and not necessarily winning and not necessarily getting everything you want, but getting opportunities. And I think that's what we can give them. I love it. I can't wait to see you guys here in two weekends on the uh, on November 12th and 13th in Toledo, Ohio at the National Middle School Duels number eight. Coach Ziola, do you got anything else for me, man? I love it. I love the philosophies. And the uh, the ideas that you're pushing forward about the sport of wrestling, you got anything else for me? Yeah, I, I want to thank you. Uh, you know, I, I think you know this is not a political statement. I just think the reality is is that whether you like it or you identify as this or not, you're you're media. And I think so much of the media nowadays. I don't care if you're right, left, if you're a centrist, it doesn't matter. I think so much of the media they think their function now is to create news. And I think that you do such a wonderful job. And there's there's a few other. I mean, I think Willie and I think there's guys in our business that do such a great job of not sensationalizing and not creating news, but you report it, you put a wonderful spin on it, you make it your own, you operate with a ton of integrity. And I think that that's very important. So I say this to you every time we talk, thank you. Thank you for what you do, because this is a very hard sport. It's very thankless and, and wrestling is a very jealous mistress. So if we don't pay a lot of attention to her, we don't get very good at it. So uh, I really, really appreciate all you do and all of your contemporaries. Thank you guys so much. Tim, thank you for the time. I thank you for the high compliment. I appreciate that. Um, stick around for a little bit here. I'll talk to you off uh, camera. And uh, thank you for coming on the Ohio Cast podcast. This is, I believe, number three. You're my third guy in the books. Geez, no, number four. You're number four. You're yeah. number four. Number four in, in the books, but number one in your heart. Number one in my heart. That's hey, right. thank you for the time. Stick around, all right? Yes, sir.